Why in the world is it so difficult to get a decent job? We have over 6 million people unemployed right now. But more than that, we have millions of people that are underemployed, that are making far less money than they should be making. They have the experience, they have the education, they've done everything that they were told to do, and they're still barely cutting $20 an hour. $25 an hour. And then we have the people that have given up. If you have given up, they don't even count you as unemployed anymore. So why is this happening? One reason is they don't know you. On average, over 100 people apply for one single job that might be online. But these are unknown people. These are faceless people. The resume doesn't tell the whole story. There's more to you than what's on that paper. It's your attitude. It's your energy level. In some cases, it's your hygiene. Hiring managers do not want to take the risk of hiring an unknown. And that might be you right now. You might be an unknown. So how do you change yourself from being unknown to known? Well, you have to meet people. This could be in person. This could be online through LinkedIn. You have to become known. You have to do the informational interviews. You have to grow the network. You have to have face-to-face -face interaction. So you're no longer a risk. People know you. Another way is attending job fairs or hiring events. Now, if you're interested in going to these virtual federal government hiring events, then I'll email you a list every week with federal hiring events that you can attend anywhere. You can do it in your house. It doesn't matter. If you're interested in that, sign up to the free newsletter down below. Second reason is people apply incorrectly. People will apply five, six, seven times a day, and they'll never change their resume. They'll just keep submitting the same one, even though their resume has them as a lab assistant. That's where their experience is at. And now they want to be a financial analyst, but you're not changing it. You want HR to go through there and fish out the gold nuggets. And HR is not doing that. You have to make it evident and relevant to the job that you're applying to. There's a stat out there that says that on average, it takes 21 to 80 job applications just to get one job offer. And it takes a lot of people longer than that. You can't just look at your resume and say, well, I have a lot of unique and different experience. So this should qualify me for something. Let me just apply at some random job and maybe I'll get in. That's not going to work that way. You have to make it 100% relevant to the job that you're applying to or you're wasting time. Third reason is the job isn't real. Every second, 10 new jobs are popping up on Indeed. Every day, hundreds of new government jobs are appearing on usajobs.gov. But how many jobs, how many of these jobs are real and how many are not? How many are just trying to gauge the interest level or maybe we don't have full funding Let's just post it. And if our funding gets pulled, we'll just take the job offer down. We'll take the job announcement down. How many are doing that? Or are we just collecting resumes at this point? Are we collecting 100, 1,000, 10,000 resumes just in case a position opens up later down the road? You have to ask yourself because this is a legitimate concern that there are fake jobs being posted online, but you won't know if it's fake or not. So a lot of times you don't have a choice. If you want a chance, you better apply. Next reason is it falls apart in the interview. Congratulations, you have an interview. It's quite the accomplishment. Now, you have less than a 50% chance of actually getting the job. The number is actually 42.1%. You have a 42% chance of getting a job from the interview stage. So how do we mess this up? Let's say you get an interview for a real job, but then you send the wrong signal. Now this could be something completely out of your control. This could be an accent which is unfair, I know. Could be an accent, could be the hygiene. It could be that what you're saying, it doesn't match the resume. The resume says one thing and you're talking about something completely different and now they think that you're lying. Even as simple as not having a microphone. Not everybody has a microphone like this, right? They just use their built-in microphone. That could leave people with a negative impression, but it's not really your fault. What are you gonna do, go out there and buy a microphone? I wouldn't even have this microphone if I weren't making videos. Let's say that you do go out there, you drop 50, 60 bucks, you get yourself a microphone. That's something within your control. You can do that. What else is in your control? You can rehearse and memorize your success stories and you memorize it to the level that you can speak it in a conversational tone. The next reason is the process is broken. Most hiring processes are broken. And the number one reason for this, the root cause is communication. There is a communication failure. Over 75% of people said that they were ghosted at some point after their interview. 
Then we have some companies, some agencies that make you do multiple interviews. You've probably heard the horror stories of doing four, five, six interviews, and then you don't hear anything back. Now in the government, the most I've seen is three interviews. And this is usually you'll interview with your future coworkers. And then the second interview could be your hiring manager. And then after that, you could have a meet and greet with the executive, which is essentially another interview. Now, there are some federal government jobs where you can get hired with zero interviews. This is usually at the GS9 level or below, sometimes maybe even GS11. Now, the private sector might not be for you. You might be more interested in a federal government job. If that's the case, if you're thinking about applying or if you have been applying, there are some tips about usajobs.gov. That's the website that you apply to government jobs. There's some tips that could increase the probability of you getting interviews and job offers. If you're interested in that, then I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.